Fellow Ricardians, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends, welcome to this Richard III Society Conference. As you've just heard, my name is Phil Stone, and I have the honour to be the chairman of the Richard III Society. And at a time such as this, it really is an honour. Welcome to our conference, the Greyfriars Dig, a new Richard III. And on that note, we heard last night that the current archaeology magazine have conducted a poll and the winner of the research project of the year is the Greyfriars Dig. <laughs> Thanks to the tireless effort of one woman and the scientific contribution of this university, the remains of Richard III have been found and identified. Today, we will hear how Philippa Langley set about putting the project together with the help of Annette Carson and John Ashdown Hill. Sarah Knight and Mary Ann Lund will tell us about re literary representations of Richard III, while Mark Lansdale will give us a psychological profile. Caroline Wilkinson will tell us how she went about turning a CT scan into a 3D image of the true Richard III. As a radiologist by profession, this one really intrigues me. Toby Capwell and Bob Woosnam Savage will talk to us about the King's last battle and the fatal wounds he received therein. Finally, Sir Peter Salisbury will tell us what the finding of Richard III means to the city of Leicester. The day will be chaired by Chris Skidmore, historian, author, MP, and a member of the Society. Chris has a, a book on Bosworth coming out at the end of May, but today he will give us his assessment of Richard III and the 21st century. Many times in the last four weeks, the question has been asked, what will the finding of Richard III mean to you? After avoiding saying a hell of a lot of hard work, I answer that I hope the publicity surrounding the find will cause people to read around the subject, to open their minds and start to see that the black-hearted villain that they believe was Richard III might not be the true Richard III after all. I'm not so naive as to think that this will happen overnight, but I like to think it could happen in time. That there are 500 of us here today and nearly a hundred or more disappointed applicants must mean something. Three, four weeks ago, we were concerned had we booked somewhere too large. <laughs> Many of you will know that two weeks back, we launched our appeal for funds to build an appropriate tomb for Richard III. Back in 2010, Philippa asked two friends to, for their thoughts about a monument and they came up with what some of us think is a very fine design, a tomb fit for a king, a memorial that honors his memory. There is still a long way to go before it is accepted by all the partners in this project, but we're working towards it. Those friends, Wendy and David Johnson, where are you? Okay. Those friends are here today, as you see. And if there's time, they will give us a short presentation on the meaning behind various aspects of their beautiful design. And you will see pictures of it outside. Quickly, I must say a few words of thanks in case there isn't time later. An event like this doesn't happen without a great deal of hard work. I can't name all of those involved, but I must thank Sue and Dave Wells, the Society's Joint Secretaries, for enrolling and registering and preparing the packs of the 500 of us. At the same time as dealing with emails and other inquiries coming in at more than 100 a day. A very big thank you goes to Wendy Moorhen for the, organizing this conference. She has done this at the same time as overseeing a total revamp of the Society's website, a website that has been getting 1.4 million hits a day
and single-handedly running our membership department, registering and sending out packs to all the new members we have gained recently. As of the beginning of this week, 450 have joined since the announcement on the 4th of February, making a total of 844 new members and rejoiners since the start of the dig at the end of August. Well done, Wendy, and thank you very much. My thanks to all our speakers, and finally, I must thank everyone involved in the Looking for Richard III project, and especially Philippa, whose bloody-mindedness is one of the reasons we are here today. Some nights in the wee small hours, as I've answered emails and prepared another statement, I've cursed her for actually finding <laughs> Richard. I've even said it to her face. But she knows I don't mean it. It's truly the greatest thing to happen in 500 years of Ricardian history. Finally, before I hand over, Philippa and I had a meeting at Kensington Palace on Thursday morning with the patron, His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, who was very interested in what we had to say. He knew an awful lot of it already. It's amazing just how much that man understands and reads his history is probably better than some of ours in certain aspects. He's with us all the way. He's sent his best wishes. He's uh, offered whatever help he can. And should it become necessary, we will certainly be willing to ask him for it. Now, that's more than enough from me. Welcome to our conference. Let's learn more about the Greyfriars Dig and a new Richard III. Thank you, and over to Chris. Chris Skidmore.